The peloton took one look at the road surface for the opening stage, or at least one look at each of the many surfaces, including sand, and declared it too dangerous to race on. The compromise was a team time trial with no times recorded for individual riders, a stage of no consequence, unlike stage two. Oh, oh, there's a big crash, a big crash on this wide road. Now there's a couple of Astana riders down. The most high profile victim of the second day crash was Vincenzo Nibali, who recorded the fastest ever Strava segment for this stretch of road as he chased back on by the simple expedient of attaching himself to the outside of the team car. Look at that, wow. Unfortunate for him, there's a <laughs> helicopter right overhead. Wow isn't quite how the commissaires put it, they kicked Nibali off the race, while up at the front new stars were establishing themselves. Esteban Chavez won the stage, the red jersey and the role of international ambassador for the Colombian dental industry. Chavez and the larger, even younger Dutchman Tom Dumoulin shared the race lead between themselves until the first rest day. Dumoulin taking it for the second time by accelerating past Chris Froome, who rather fancied the win in the red jersey himself. This is something that I'm really surprised of and uh... Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. Some riders didn't make it to the rest day. Stage 8 had brought another big crash in the peloton and what must have felt to Peter Sagan at the time like an attempted assassination. In fact, he'd been knocked off by a motorbike losing his temper, a significant amount of skin, and 300 Swiss francs in fines as an added insult for the way he reacted. Stage 11 in Andorra was the biggest climbing day that Walter had seen for decades. Five massive mountains, up which Chris Froome had to ride with a broken foot after crashing in the first few kilometers. On the final climb, Fabio Aru attacked to take the race lead. By the time Froome got there, it was clear this was the final climb of his race. I just tried to ride at my own speed there after, after the crash and um, yeah, I'm, I'm in quite a lot of pain at the moment. On stage 15, Joaquin Rodriguez took a mountain top stage win and the next day he took the red jersey from Aru by a single second. All the while against the odds, the gradient and his own physiology, Dumoulin had been holding on and waiting for his speciality, the time trial. This is phenomenal, and look at the speed he's coming by him. He'll be in the leader's jersey. Tom Dumoulin will lead the Vuelta today. Dumoulin was back in red, only by three seconds from Fabio Aru. But by now, he'd developed an air of invincibility going uphill. He withstood repeated Aru attacks on stage 18 and launched one of his own the next day to double his lead to six going into the final stage in the mountains. It's not going to be. The, not, it's not going to be fun. Uh, I, I, of course, I'm nervous. On a race that's built its reputation on steep summit finishes, it was the penultimate climb of a day that finished on the flat that proved decisive. Fabio Aro attacked, and for once, Dumoulin couldn't follow. But once was all it took. And Tom Dumoulin, well, his welter is definitively over.